Hey everybody, Battleborn Batteries here, come bringing you another how-to video on a lot of this uh, Victron equipment. Today we're going to be talking about our BMV 712. That's these two combined together. On the top here you're going to see our Smart Shunt. The Smart Shunt is getting all the information coming out of the battery. It's going to tell you the correct state of your battery and uh, how it's functioning, how much draw you have in your system, what's coming out. The display is coming with it as well. The display you can mount anywhere in your trailer. It comes with about a 30 foot cord. So really wherever is gonna be convenient for you to put it is gonna be a good place to be. For our smart shunt, putting it in is not very difficult, but uh, there are a couple nuances to it that I wanna talk about today. You have two sides. You have your battery side and your load side of the shunt. Coming straight off the negative side of your battery bank, we want to make sure that that negative cable is connected to the battery side. That's going to be the only side of how this will work. Um, if you have it flipped around the other way, you're just going to need to undo everything and put it back in there. Off the load side, you know, you can have a lot of your other loads going back to the rest of the system. It's a great way to function. That way everything in your entire system is running through your BMV and um, it's getting all that information. So that way, whenever you're looking at it, you're getting correct information out of it. On this, this is a Bluetooth very friendly device. Um, I highly recommend the Victron Connect app. It is very, very easy, very simple. One of the better apps I've seen as far as functionality with it. And um, first I'm gonna show you a little bit of how to program that into your system. So this is the Victron Connect app. I am Bluetooth connected to this. And with the Bluetooth, you can be right around that 50 feet or closer, you know, just like with any Bluetooth device. First, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna hit our gear in the top right corner, um, and then we are gonna click on our battery. Now, these are all the settings that we need you to put in. It's one of the only things we can't program out of our doors. So when you get this, when you get everything installed in the system, um, we'll need you to throw in these numbers. The first one here is gonna be um, the amp hours of your battery bank. I have this already set to 270 amp hours for our nice GC3 right here. Um, all you need to do to program is just click on it, change whatever parameters, and hit OK. The second one is going to be our charge voltage. Now we usually set this at around 14.2 volts. Now 14.2 volts is where our battery starts to um, balance the cells at in the cell, or in the battery. So when we get above that level, that's how we make sure we're getting that nice balanced action across our entire battery bank. So I like putting it at 14.2, same thing. You're just gonna click on it, change it to 14.2, hit okay, and you're good to go. Now come a, a few of the weird ones that we don't hear very often. Uh, our discharge floor. The reason this is important is Battleborn batteries, um, you can discharge all the way from completely full to completely empty. And since that's the case, we're gonna put a 0% discharge floor. Not because you're always gonna bring it to that level, just because that's how far you can go. So we wanna get a true measure of what you have going on. Our next one is gonna be our tail current. That's gonna be kind of the drag coming in. 4% is a good place for our batteries. We have a very low internal resistance in the batteries and that's why that's important. Our charge detection time, it's gonna already be set at three minutes so you can leave it right there. Our Pukert exponent, we're gonna set that to 1.05. Um, our charge efficiency factor is going to be 99%. That's just how efficient the battery is accepting and discharging. Our current threshold, we're going to set at 0 0.10 amps. And then our time to go averaging period is going to be three minutes. Now, here's where people do things a couple different ways. Personally, I like to have the battery start synchronized turned on. That means when we get over our 14.2 threshold, the battery monitor, the battery, the system is all going to sync up with one another. The reason that's important is because every time you bring it to a full state of charge, it's giving you a true accurate reading of what you have going on in the system. When you set it like that, you, you don't really have to play with it at all. Um, the other options down below are to calibrate and synchronize the state of charge. If you do hit the synchronize, whatever your battery is at at that moment is going to be your new 100%. Personally, I would leave it alone. There's really not a lot of functionality there unless you are 100% sure that your battery is at a full state of charge. Bringing you a little a troubleshooting tips for your BMV 712. These are just a couple common ones that we do see very often. You know, whether it's out of the box, whether it's you connecting them up to the rest of the system, just things we want you to be aware of. Putting it in that first time, once it's up and functioning, it's gonna work great for you. A couple little things is this little piece right here is gonna be our connection to our battery to give our shunt power. Um, now this little thing has a little milliamp fuse. 
and it's in the line of the wire. You can't miss it. It's a little tiny fuse on there. And whether it looks blown or not, if you're not getting connectivity to your BMV 712, make sure that you change that out real quick. And I've seen that fix it over a dozen times when people call me with that same issue. This little first port is gonna have all the power going to that. So make sure you're in that one. There is another one right next to it. So make sure you don't put it in that second one. That's a easy, very easy mistake to be made. Um, so just keep that in the back of your head. Always look at your connections. Make sure these are really, really nice and tight. The killer of any system is making sure that you have all your connections really, really tied down. So if you see any wiggling of your cables on your connections, make sure that those are, are very secure on that. For the BMV, the most problems that we see are gonna be with Bluetooth issues, and it's usually not this. It's usually us as humans trying to play with our phone and figure out how it works. So download the Victron Connect app first, open it up, kind of get it, get it all open and ready to where you can start seeing that. Now you won't be able to see any of that information until you do have power to it running from the battery. It does need the power of this to function in the system. So with the Bluetooth on there, always if you're not seeing it right away, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on, open and close the app a time or two, and then right when it shows up, you're just gonna punch in the standard code of six zeros to pair with any of the Victron devices for the first time. And then, of course, you know, if there's any questions on any of that stuff, um, feel free to give us a call down at Battleborn Batteries. We're always available to help on any of this stuff. Uh, I hope that helps somebody finding a, a little trouble in their system. Thank you.